Good heavens, what was that? That's our front gate. Is it sick? It's shrieking, and it is also romancing every cat in the neighborhood. John, if you don't fix those hinges, I'm gonna go off mine. Helen, I can't go out there now. Why not? It's the middle of the night. Even if I were to muzzle the gate, I'd have every female cat in the neighborhood at my throat. <laughs> They have their illusions, too, you know. <laughs> John, this really isn't funny. All the neighbors are complaining. Oh, come on. Now, where's your sense of humor? What was that crash? I'll bet some poor, frustrated cat found out it was just a gate <clears throat> and decided to end it all. May I come in, please? Come in, dear. <laughs> Lydia, bad dream. I'd settle for that if I could sleep. It was this. It came flying through the window. <laughs> Hasn't anyone in this family got a sense of humor? Formerly of Bensonhurst, just bought the house next door. Oh, my name's John Monroe. On behalf of me and the missus. Why, you didn't have to do that, for heaven's sake. It's, uh... <laughs> Read the A. Nice to see you, Paul and Sheila. Didn't have room to write the date. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very nice. Just a gesture. I'm very touched. Thank you. Don't mention it. The other bag of sugar. We tried to sign it, but we kept punching a hole in the bag with a pencil. Well, I think the eggs uh, say it very nicely for both of them. Thank you. Don't mention it. You, uh, you didn't happen to find an old shoe laying around here, did you? A shoe? Well, it's not a shoe exactly. It's a boot with a, a knife on the side and a compass on the knife. My wife threw it out the window last night. Now, why don't you level with me? That's not your wife's shoe. That was your shoe. All right, I'll level with you. It was my shoe, but my wife threw it. It broke our window. Well, I should think so. Big me boot like that. I'll get it. No, no rush. If you have any use for it. Well, I can't think of one offhand unless your wife gets upset enough to throw the other one sometime. She might. She might. Okay, in that case, I'll, uh... I'll hang on to it for a while. Well, it's worth the gamble. They're great boots. If they don't fit, you can always throw them back. <laughs> Piece of straw? Uh, no thanks. Chewing tobacco? Gum? Snuff? Anything? No thanks. How long you been living in the country? No, oh, 15 years. And you don't chew anything? You won't tell anybody, will you? That's your business. Having troubles? Yes, you see, I'm... I'm not a carpenter. I'm a, I'm a cartoonist. Ow! Why don't you get Zeff Leggan? Who is Zeff Leggan? You'd love him. Everybody does. Everybody hires him, you know, for odd jobs, and he can fix anything. If he likes you, and that he's in the right mood. I know the type. Funniest guy you ever heard. Lost my wife ten years ago, he'll say to you, see? And you say to him, real straight, that's too bad. Yep, he'll say it, lost her in a dry goods store, slipped out the back door when she wasn't looking. 
You know where he lives? Sure. Okay, let's give him a call. Oh, he don't do business that way. You gotta meet him. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, want a whittle? No, thanks. I, uh, I don't whittle. You don't chew, you don't whittle? Don't you ever get bored? And he's always playing the harmonica. Uh-huh. Jeff, like you meet a friend of mine. Been living around here 15 years. Figured about time you two met. This is John Monroe. He's a cartoonist. You a married man? I lost my wife 10 years ago. Lost in a dry goods store, eh? No, she died. You want to fix my gate? I think he liked me. What's that, dear? Oh. The carpenter's here to fix the gate. What carpenter? I've engaged a man named believe it or not, Zeph Leggin. That's a funny routine about his wife. You know him? Oh, yes, indeedy. You can't live in a town 15 years and not know old Zeph Leggin. Lydia's out there talking to him. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> He's probably telling one of his jokes. Jokes? You called those quaint, hoary, twinkle in the eye corn pone chestnuts jokes? There's an old saying, be true to your teeth or they may be false to you. <laughs> Sometimes a man finds out things about his own family that he's better off not knowing. Fella goes in this grocery store. He says to the man, what do you got in the shape of bananas? Cucumbers, he says. Are you going to fix my gate? What do you got in the shape of tools? There's a toolbox in the garage. It won't come to us. We'll have to go to it. Needs new batteries. I'll be going to Barton's store in Danbury this afternoon. You want me to take it along? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Is your only saw? Mm, I guess so. Anything wrong with it? Can't use it. Left-handed. Okay, I guess you'll just have to bring your own. Oh, a uh, job of work will come a little higher if I furnish my own tools. Of course it will. <laughs> you know, he's really very funny. He calls a taxi a taxidermy cab because they skin you. <laughs> you really think that's funny? Well, there's a lot of truth to it. Where's Lydia? Just out watching. Oh, fine. Just fine. You're upset. Upset? <laughs> Why should I be upset? If I'm stuck with a daughter with no taste, I'm stuck, that's all. You know, John, I think you're letting your ego... No, no, it's got nothing to do with my ego. I am paying that mutated Mark Twain a dollar and a half an hour, and he's out there... If he wants to do a Chautauqua tent show, I say let him take one on the road and do it. I want my gate fixed. So the man says, Lim... Why'd you buy a steamroller for your potato field instead of a tractor? Lem says I thought it might raise mashed potatoes. Oh. <laughs> Morning. 
Well, good morning, Mr. Monroe. Didn't know you was there listening. I've been listening all morning. I, uh, I haven't heard any sawing. Uh, it torrent sawing weather. Toir. Oh? You know much about sawing? Enough to make me think you can't tell a hawk from a handsaw. You put them out in the weather, the one that rests is a handsaw. <laughs> There's this fella who was amusing a crowd with the antics of his dog. Now, a man in the crowd called out and said, Say, mister, how'd you train your dog to do that? I can't teach mine a single trick. And the first fella says, Well, begin with, you got to know more than the dog. <laughs> Men are born with two eyes and one tongue, but to keep right on saying twice as much as you see. <laughs> I hear tell that you're a miracle worker, Zeff. When you work, it's a miracle. A man who's always kicking, bub, seldom has a leg to stand on. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, here, here's your flash. But it doesn't work. Needs new batteries. You said you were going to take it to Barton's and get it fixed. Nope. Told you it's going by there. Didn't say nothing about stopping in. <laughs> Defective. <laughs> jokes is what they were, just plain, old, not very funny jokes. What can you do for a dog with fleas? Not much more than you can do for one without them. <laughs> and the, the good people of Westbury are going to go on laughing and whooping and hollering at Zephlegan for the same reason that they go on polishing those brass cannonballs so passionately that sit in Courthouse Square. But Lydia is, is not chauvinistic or particularly civic-minded, and there she was cackling away at these old chestnuts just as if she really thought they were funny. <laughs> Feller sees a sign in the store, cast iron sinks. Well, Chuck says, fella, any fool knows that. Oh, boy. The difficult thing was resisting the temptation to bring experience to the fore and destroy Leggin at his own game with some pieces of my own. But after all, I am a professional. People would say that I was taking unfair advantage. I should have said that. I should have said... Noblesse oblige is all that prevents the total destruction of that questionable and fragile reputation, you backwards Voltaire. I should have thought of it, then I would have said it. Still, <laughs> might be kind of funny to see what would happen if uh, the opportunity came along for another head-to-head -head confrontation like that. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, please! In West Bay City, please, marching band and Charter Society is proud to sponsor the Battle of the Century! Tonight's subject, humor. A major rhetorical confrontation between those two paragons of paranomasia, Ephraim Leggins and John Monroe. We ask your attention, courtesy for the participants and ladies, Remove your hats, please. 
A farmer got his pig killed by an automobile. He was raving mad. The motorist says, don't take on that away. I'll replace your pig. The farmer says, you can't do it. You're too tall, you're too skinny, and you ain't good looking enough. <laughs> go out of our marriage, you or me? <laughs> a city girl and a country boy take a moonlight walk in a meadow. They see two cows rubbing noses, romantic style. The country boy says, uh, ain't that a beautiful sight? I sure would like to do the same. She says, go ahead, it's your cow. <laughs> I wouldn't rent this room to everybody, Mr. Spencer. This is where my husband lost his mind. the city man a drink from his jug. No thanks, said the city feller. Mountain man pointed a long rifle in his face. When I offer a man a drink, he drinks. The city man took a drink and almost choked. He says, this is the worst tasting stuff I ever had in my whole life. The mountain man says, ain't it the truth? Here, hold a gun on me whilst I have one. <laughs> Simmer. You sure you want to go on? And this is Tom Weatherby, an old bull of your mother's. He never got to first base. <laughs> When blew so hard, she laid the same egg three times. Why don't you let me know what it is if it's so pleasant? Fell in the raccoon coat, didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> May not know much, but I ain't lost. Well, don't come and look at the rainbow then, you big ape. Seems like if a man can't win in his own fantasy, he ought to quit. to sleep, so I thought I'd come upstairs. I guess I'm just not tired. Oh. Well, nothing I can do? Not really. I came up here to apologize for laughing at Zeph Lagan. Oh, that. It made you angry. No, not really. You broke the flashlight to make it look like you were mad at Seth because you didn't want to embarrass me in front of all those strangers. 
Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it. So, I came up here to apologize. That's all. Did anyone ever tell you that you have a paralogical mind? What's that? When you're trying to think something out between, let's say, A and B, by some ridiculous and perverse reasoning, you wind up at Q. I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. You come by it honestly. I think I'm getting tired now. Well, wait a minute. I want you to know, Lydia, that I was not angry with you at all. I was just angry with myself. What did you do? I lost my sense of humor. But how can you lose something like that? You try taking yourself too seriously sometime, and you'll see how easy it is. No, it was all my mistake. You don't have a thing to apologize for. Do you mean it? Yes, I mean it. Thank you, Daddy. Forget it. The flashlight wasn't very good anyway. Daddy, my teacher says it takes a big man to admit his mistakes. Mm -hmm, I suppose so. Seth may be funny, but I think you're a big man. is about, all right, don't come look at the rainbow, then, you big ape. <laughs> Lydia was very concerned about you last night. Really? Why? I think she thought you were angry at her for laughing at Zeph. Why, that's nonsense. Lydia knows better than that. Well, John, I do think you ought to tell her the truth. Which is what? Which is that you lost your sense of humor over the whole thing and took yourself too seriously, is all. No, that's ridiculous, Ellen, and you know it. It's just that a man in my position doesn't like to be caught on a Sunday morning with a defective flashlight. Thank you. 